In the previous session, we understood all the pros and cons of monolithic. And this is how the monolithic uh, architecture for our e-commerce uh, product used to look. So it has it had search uh, plus product listing, uh, rating reviews module, users, payment, shipping, notification, all of this module in one package, which is deployed in one or more virtual machines or containers. And that's how we used to scale out, having a duplicate copy of the whole thing deployed and then um, you know served using load balance. Now, say for example, this is a user, right? And he's using mobile application or desktop. If he want to access all of this service, he can just contact or connect to any of the uh, different servers or request any of the different servers because every server has every uh, functions um, or modules deployed in it. So you basically can um, talk to any of these modules and that's how it used to work. Now, how do we basically make this monolithic e-commerce application to microservice. Now you need to understand one concept called as functional decomposition. This is very important. It's called as uh, functional decomposition. So this is basically a technique wherein you basically break down the existing system into smaller different modular services. How do we do this? How do we know what is? So we have to do the functional decomposition. It basically, you decompose this whole application um, based on the functional areas, or we can call it as different kind of services, right? So in this case, it's very easy that like you look at the modules here. So they are totally serving their own different purpose, right? Now, search plus product, let's, this is one functional area. Let's make this into one, okay, one microservice there, okay? Now that's one microservice. Now let's make one more functional service that is basically the module which basically handles rating and reviews as one more microservice. Boom, okay, there, one more microservice. Now users is definitely a different functional area or a service where we want to have authentication, reset, password reset, uh, you know, sign up, um, whatever, all of this functionality into one microservice, okay, why not? This is one functional area, let's make one more, yeah. So payments definitely is totally a different function. Just make one more shipping and notification, right? So we have all of this individual, you know, independent uh, granular services running. Now they are individually deployed. They are not packed, uh, packaged as one application. They are individually packaged and every microservice has individual uh, you know, code bases, okay? In here, we had one code base, which has all of this code into, if you want to just run it, you just have to clone the whole code uh, of this application project and then run it. Now, what we have done is we have broken this into different services and every different service has its own code base and every different service has its own dedicated team, which basically understands in depth about their specific uh, you know, service. So they don't really need to understand too much into other services. They just care about their service and they just maintain that application and it is individually deployed and they can be scaled horizontally based on the traffic or the requirement. So now that we have broken all of the services into independent services, those are called as microservices, now, how our user or an actor or an application interact with the um, e-commerce application, e-commerce microservice application. Now, earlier we used to just make a call to any one server and we used to get uh, all of the data which we needed. Now, we know specifically, okay, this service is providing all the search. So anything we want to search, any search or product listing, we have to request to this microservice Otherwise, if you want users, we have to request here. We have, if you want payments, we have to request this service, something like this, right? So we have all, it, it's thinking like everything is kind of like a different project, different services which are deployed differently. So anything we want, we basically have to talk to those respective service and get the data out of it. Earlier, everything, every module used to be in the same code base. It was much easier. So that database used to be here. Every module used to interact with the same database. Now it was much easier to do join or anything, anything, right? 
and then get all of the information. Basically, when users wants to interact, you know, interact with the payments, all he has to do is uh, from user, you just call the payment related function in the in the function inside whatever you are doing in, in the user module. You basically use to get all of the data from payments. Or maybe if payments want to send a notification, you just call the notification function call or whatever uh, from the payments module, you basically was able to send not, you know, notifications much easier, right? And similarly, when shipping is completed, if shipping wants to notify the user, shipping basically calls notification function inside shipping uh, processing or whatever module. It was much easier. It was just by a function call, we used to um, you know, do all the work. But how these guys does this? Because these are separately deployed and notification code base doesn't have any code which is related to payments and payments doesn't have any code which is related to notification because they are decomposed or separated into individual functional areas. Now, say for example, what happens when, when a product is packed, I want to send a notification to the user. Now, earlier it was much easier because shipping used to call the function and the notification that, and the and notification used to go to the user. But now what happens? Shipping don't have the notification module at all. He can't really call the function. What we have to do is we have to call the shipping from shipping. We have to call the notification in the similar way we used to call uh, in the similar way where uh, the, the, the user is calling, right? Now, this is a separate service. So what we have to do is we have to call, make a call from shipping to notification. This is not a functional call. It is, this is not just a function call. It will be something else, which is of a different interface, maybe REST or RPC or whatever it is. But usually REST is uh, suggested and everywhere it is used because it's very simple. Say, for example, the same REST uh, notification API uh, used by the user or the mobile application will be called by the shipping to notify something else or maybe there's a different api which shipping is calling in the notification service to tell the notification to send a notification to the user uh, that the product is you know packed and it is ready to ship so basically the service interacts with each other using rest calls say payment might be interacting uh, with users using the REST API. The say ratings and reviews might be interacting with the notification using REST. So now everything happens via REST. Basically the inter service call happens via REST or maybe any other protocol. Now this is all good, but where is the data? Now, do we have one database where everyone is connecting and talking to? No, how they do is every service should have its own database. Okay, every service has its own database. Now there is advantage and there is disadvantage. Also, the advantage is since that we have uh, one database per service, it's very easy to uh, choose whatever kind of database we want. We are not stuck with the same technology, uh, which or same database, uh, which every module uses. For this, maybe for notification, we might be using RDBMS. For search, we might be using Elasticsearch, or um, maybe for user, we might be using RDBMS. And for the payments also, we might be using um, what RDBMS. Maybe for reviews and rating, it's too much of uh, data. So maybe, maybe we are using NoSQL here. Uh, this gives the ability to have a polyglot architecture where we can use different database in the same application, right? That's, this is one advantage. And also, now if you look at the transactions and the number of reads and writes happening here, it's also kind of distributed between all of these databases. In earlier case, what used to happen is maybe it was all, all of the transaction used to happen, uh, so all of the reads and writes in the transaction used to be heavily bombarded to the same database. Now it's not the same case. Now it's much easier. The, 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 the you know, the, the load is kind of distributed between all of these databases and it's much simpler. But there is also a disadvantage. What is it? Here we could have easily join, does, you know, do joins and everything because all of the data is in the same table and the modules had, uh, 
every module is available, it was much easier to access the data and it was easier to do joins also, but now it's not possible at all. I mean, there is always disadvantage and advantage. We are going to discuss more about advantage and disadvantages now. So basically this is how it works. And there is there are a lot, a lot of components in between. I'm going to cover those in the upcoming videos, but for the basic understanding of it, so this is what microservice and there is API gateway and there is a lot of things in between, but for now, this is what basically microservice is. Now let's understand what are the advantages and disadvantages of microservices. The first one is scaling is easier as we have decomposed uh, the big application into individual services. Scaling is, is much easier because if we just want to scale one specific service, it's much easier and much faster. Say, for example, if more and more users are searching the products on your application, so the high, there is huge traffic on search. So we can just scale out the search service and we don't need to really do anything to other part of the services. So the application is happy. And the second one is deployment is easy as the size of the code base is small and the start time will definitely reduce because we just need to run that service. It's, it will not take more time uh, to load the application, build the application and copy and deploy it. So it is kind of like interconnected to scaling as well. So if you want to scale faster, since the deployment is faster, the scaling will be obviously much faster because as soon as we add more container, the deployment time is less. So the scaling will be faster. So the third one is there is no dependency of technological stack, which we are using between services. So one application can be built using Python. Uh, I mean, sorry, one service can be built using Python. The other service can be using totally different technology, like maybe Go or Rust or Java or something like that. Say, maybe I want to use Java for all the APIs which are customer facing, and maybe I will use Python for all the backend processing. That's all possible. And we don't need to um, stick to legacy technologies just because all the other services are inter you know, uh, directly uh, connected or tightly coupled like in mono monolithic. So we can always upgrade individual microservices with the latest technology without having a lot of hazards. So the, so the fourth thing is faster to develop and understand as the code base is really small right now and we know what we are dealing with. And this is, uh, say for example, if I just want to understand how the payment works, I just take a look at the payment, uh, uh, get payment code only. So it is much easier to understand because it is also loosely coupled and the code base is only specific to payment. So any developer or the new team member uh, doesn't have to go through all of the code to really understand what that particular service is doing. The other advantage is microservices are loosely coupled. What it means is changing one part of the code in one service doesn't really uh, affect the other services. Whereas in monolithic um, application, changing one part of the core will have huge impact on other modules. And also one more advantage of having uh, you know, loosely coupled services is, say for example, in e-commerce application, say the if the payment service is not really working, it doesn't really impact uh, the functionality of other features like search, product listing, adding to cart, or you know, uh, looking at the product description, reviews or comments. Um, the only service which is really affected is payment and we can really figure out what's happening um, with payment service easily and also we can fix or you know, sh switch to something else which if we have any alternate service available. And the same thing applies to any other service. If the search is down uh, but other features are working, the other part of the site is still accessible. Only the search feature is will not be working. So this is kind of good. Instead of taking down the whole application, um, we have uh, other part of the application still working and we can easily figure out what's happening with the service which is affected. So what are the disadvantages of using microservices? The first one is inter-process communication or inter-service communication. In earlier, uh, in monolithic services, calling uh, different services was much easier because all you have to do is import that specific module and just call that function. It's, you know, you're basically calling one more service. But now, since we have decomposed the services, now if you want to call a different service, all you have to do is call using REST API. Now, it causes a lot of problem. In our code, 
we have to handle a lot of different new cases. Say, for example, I'm calling a REST service from, say, payment to some kind of like, uh, yeah, fraud detection or something, a uh, service which basically provides fraud detection. Now, what happens if the fraud detection API gives me 500? How do I handle it? What should I do? And the second thing is it might time out or it might um, give 404 or it might take more time. What I have to do? So basically you'll have to have, um, you'll, not, you'll have to handle all of these different use cases. And there are things like we have to do some kind of like circuit breaking sometimes. All of these new concepts comes into picture when we have a distributed services or microservices. Now, the second thing is distributed transaction. In earlier, it was much simpler, right? The DB transactions are like you open a transaction, you do call different services and then, uh, or database calls, and then you basically commit it or roll back. Now, since these are different services, you can't, and they are using different databases, you can't really have a transactions. Now, it comes to, uh, it leads to usage of a new kind of distributed, distributed transactions, like two-phase commit or Saga, uh, and those are again complicated. Now, coming to resource usage in microservices, it is usually tend to use more resource because for the fact that we have deployed all of these services individually. In earlier case, all of the services used to be in one service. Kind of we used to efficiently utilize the given resource um, in the same server or wherever because everything is available there. There is no not a lot of deployments were there. So, but now since we have um, a lot of service, we have to deploy all of them individually. It's like, it really, I mean, it kind of consumes a little more resource. And the fourth one is debugging issues. In earlier, it was all functional call in a function. It was much easier to debug since now it's basically calls, uh, you know, rest call, calling one more rest between services it's kind of difficult to trace and uh, you know debug these issues. There are so many technologies available for tackling those also, kind of like distributed tracing. Uh, you can use Agar uh, implementation to uh, basically trace all of these microservices which are calling microservices and like it, like you want to trace the hops uh, between services. It's all possible uh, using distributed tracing. There are a few more disadvantages as well. When we have hundreds and hundreds of these microservices, maintaining them sometimes become hectic as well. And deployment also, because there are a lot of moving components in our entire application. Like we have, we were supposed to learn API gateway in upcoming videos also. Um, so maintaining the API gateway, logging, okay, tracing, all of this is definitely is a pain. And also we might end up having data duplication also because every of every service is having their own databases. So yeah, there are a lot of problems, but, but the reason why are we doing this is to get high availability. If our application does really want high availability and also have the capability to handle a lot of traffic, then I think we need to take this risk and then use microservice um, architecture to implement them.